So we've got this far, you've weighed in, you're now ready to go to the warm up room or ready to get yourself prepared. First thing you need to do after the weigh in is eat. What would I recommend you eating? Well, not too much, especially if you've been cutting weight. The last thing you want to do is eat way too much and then overload your body and be <laughs> bloated and struggling to move. I would recommend uh, something like white bread, uh, white bread because it's more quickly absorbed into the body. Uh, I used to have uh, a white bagel with uh, Nutella spread and a mashed up banana to, to get me going. White bread quickly absorbed, sugar from the chocolate quickly absorbed, um, energy from the banana would be a little bit slower release so that would give me more sustained energy once I got going with my warm up and competition. I would then often have a couple of Jaffa cakes, again, just, just, just a couple, not too much, just again to give me a bit of, a sugar, bit of sugar, a bit of a pick up. This isn't about eating well, this is now about fueling your body to make sure you've got the energy to get through the competition. Probably the biggest thing you need is to rehydrate or uh, to, to get the fluids back in, especially if you've been cutting weight and you've maybe dehydrated. If you, if you haven't been cutting weight and haven't dehydrated, then just water will be fine. If you have, then I'd probably recommend an electrolyte drink of some kind, just to replace the salts that you may have lost through sweating and, and dehydration. <clears throat> so once you've fueled up, now you're ready to go into the warm-up room. Get to the warm-up room in plenty of time. Have a look around. You'll find that there is a scoreboard. There is a desk where you can nominate the weights. That might not be there. That might be in the competition itself. But there will be an area where all of the lifters have to pass through to get to the competition. Personally, I try to avoid that area with my lifters. I tend to go to the other end of the, way, uh, the warm up room so that we have our own space and we don't have people walking in front every time we're trying to do a warm up set. Next thing is uh, make sure that wherever you position yourself, you're not facing a mirror. I'm shocked at how many competitions I go to and there are still mirrors around. So try and position yourself so you are not facing a mirror. Be proactive. If you are on your own or with your coach, one of you needs to go and find out uh, if the competition is running on time. If not, how delayed is it? They don't often bring it earlier. It's more often delayed than anything. So find out when the expected start time is. Are they on time? Find out if there is going to be a planned break between the snatch and clean and jerk. Knowing that information at the start of the competition just means that you can time your warm up really well so that you're prepared just at the right time when they call you. And between snatch and clean and jerk, you're not having to disturb the officials when they're going to be busy with the competition. So I would do those things early. If you are being, if you are nervous, if you're feeling sick, if you're feeling sweaty, if you're feeling anxious, if you're shaking, if, if you just don't want to be there and you, you're just really worried about the whole situation, don't worry. All you can do is your best. And the way that I help my lifters to deal with it and the best way that I used to deal with it was knowing that you've done everything you can in preparation, familiarise yourself and be as organised as you can as we've already discussed in the build up to the weigh-in, take as much pressure off yourself as possible and all you can do is go to that bar and give it your best. That's all anybody can ask of you. So if you do that and you don't perform, don't worry. If you do that and you do perform, then well done. Remember, this is a learning curve. And most people that will be watching this video will be in their early stages of entering competitions. This is where you make your mistakes. I made so many mistakes and my mistakes continue through my career. But I tell you what, once I learned a mistake, I never made the same mistake again. So don't worry if it doesn't go quite to plan. That is totally normal. Okay, so... One more thing before you go to the actual competition, before you actually have to go on the platform and, and lift, before the comp starts, you are going to be asked, with everybody else that's in that group, to be presented to the crowd. So what will happen is an official will come backstage and say, right, presentation, and they will call all of the lifters, and they'll put you in a line in order that they call you, and then they'll ask you to go out to the platform. At that point, you stand in a line behind the platform, and the organisers will introduce you to the crowd. When they call your name, just step forwards, hand in the air, step back, job done. While you're there and everybody else is being introduced to the crowd, I would recommend just absorbing what's going on. Have a look around. Okay, if you want to know where your friends are, if you want to know where your family are, then take a look. Yeah, you know where they are. So it's not going to be a surprise that, oh, they're over there now, or you didn't know where they were and you're looking for them. Or... Take a minute to look out. Where are you going to visualize? Where are you going to be looking when you go on the bar? 
work that out whilst you're out there in this in this situation once the presentation is done the lifters will go backstage and start their warm-up or continue with their warm-up and i would recommend you don't just stay there go to the bar feel the bar is the knurling really sharp is it really smooth that's happened to me before really really smooth bar at an international comp and luckily i'd known that because i felt the bar um, and i had time to deal with that psychologically don't worry if you're the last one on the platform um, when everybody else has walked backstage who cares this is about you and your performance you do what's right for you to get comfortable and familiar with that situation take an observation where is the chalk all right where is the chalk your coach might give it to you backstage but if not where is it now you're familiar with the competition and what's going to happen and what to expect when you walk out get yourself back into the warm-up room and go and start or finish your warm-up in the warm-up room, you need to make sure that you time your warm-up accordingly so that you have enough time uh, to, to do everything. I would say to my lifters, get yourself stretched out, get yourself done with your overhead squats and your snatch balance by, and I would give them a time. I'm not going to interfere with that, I'm going to let my lifter do that. Now, once I've looked at the scoreboard, and reading a scoreboard is a totally different issue here, I, I need to go through that as a separate blog and, uh, and talk through it in detail. Uh, but I'll give a quick rundown. At the weigh-in, everybody has entered their starting weights. Now you have a scoreboard. That scoreboard is in the, in the warm-up room. Coach or lifter have the opportunity to go and see it. And you will see everybody's name. And there will be a number one, two and three for snatch. And they'll be the same for clean and jerk, one, two and three. Underneath the number ones in both snatch and clean and jerk columns, you will see a number. And that number is the weight that you nominated at the weigh-in. So you'll now be able to see everybody else's weight. Now let's say, for argument's sake, you were starting on 35 kilos and there are a whole load of other numbers. What you need to do is count how many lifts are expected before you're on. So anything lower than 35, you would count. So add up all of the numbers that are lower than the weight you want to start on. If there are three people starting on 35 and you are further down the scoreboard than the other two, then those numbers would count before you. If you were the top of the scoreboard with 35 and then there were two others underneath you, don't count the 35s because you would be on before them. Be mindful that they may increase their starting weights. Likewise, you may plan to go up as well. So have that in mind um, if people are starting around the same weights. And if you're a coach watching this, you need to be watching those other lifters to see how you think their warm-ups are going and do you think they're going to go up? Because if they are, you need to factor that into how many lifts you're counting for your lifter i would say one lift one minute roughly you need to keep an eye the competition might move really quickly it might go really slowly depending on how quick and efficient the loaders are on the platform so if for example there are 12 anticipated lifts before you're on 12 minutes i would say take one of your warm-up lifts every two minutes so let's work backwards 35 my lifter is starting on 35 kilos <clears throat> I would probably have them do a last warm-up attempt at say 33 before that 30 before that 27 before that maybe 24 before that 20 before that 15 let's do a couple of sets at 15 there we go there's seven sets so i've worked out what my lifter is going to do before we even go into the weight into the warm-up room we've discussed that we know what we're going to do we know what the plan is so there are my weight there are the lifts that i want to take so now i've got seven lifts well, hang on a minute i've just said <clears throat> sorry uh i've just said on the platform there's going to be i think it was 12 i said before i'm on but i want to take one of my sets every two minutes so if they're going to take a minute per set that's about 12 minutes but hang on a minute seven means 14 minutes ah that doesn't work so i need to make sure that i take my first couple of sets before the competition even starts and before that, I would have done my snatch balances. Before that, I would have done overhead squats. Before that, I would have done any stretching. Before that, I would have put my kit on. Before that, I would have gone to the bathroom. So make sure that you've done all of what you need to in time. Plan that and make sure you're there in time. You're better off being early to the way to the warm-up room rather than late because you don't want to be rushing it. So bathroom, get yourself kitted up. Find yourself a platform. Get all the equipment you need set up ready. You may have to share weights. Do your stretching, your normal warm-up routine. Get yourself a bar, play with the bar. And make sure that when coach says, 
take your first warm up lift, you are ready to do so. So that would be my advice, uh, preparing and getting your warm up ready. Um, focus on yourself. When you get a competition, there is no point in worrying about everybody else. Focus on you, focus on number one. You can control what you do, but you can't control what everybody else does. So if you start worrying about everybody else and what other people are lifting, then that could well affect your concentration and how you perform. So as good as they are, as rubbish as they are, just let everybody else do their own thing and you focus on you. That is the main thing. If you're inexperienced, I would say you've got to trust the coach. You have to trust the coach to know what they're doing. If you're watching this and you're going to be going to a competition without a coach, that's okay as well. But when you get there, just have a chat, ask around, ask the officials, hey, is there anybody here that can help me? They'll probably put you in touch. Weightlifting is quite a small community and we do like to help each other. So don't be afraid to ask for help. And somebody will probably step in. They won't get involved too much in coaching you the technicalities, or they shouldn't do, not at this stage. But what they will be able to do is read the scoreboard for you and tell you when to take your lift. If you can't find anybody, then have a look at the scoreboard and see another lifter that is on pretty much the same weights as you in terms of the weights they're starting on and follow what they do on their warm up. You've just got to hope that they know what they're doing and that you're not both in the same position. <clears throat> okay, if the timings at a competition change last minute, then deal with it. There is no point in complaining, there is no point in arguing. Uh, you just got to go with it. So if, if the officials turn around and say, hey, next category is 30 minutes late starting, it is what it is. It's the same for everybody. The person that deals with it the quickest is probably going to cope the best. In the warm-up room, do not expect your coach to be with you. Okay? Yes, they will be at some point. Yes, they'll probably help you change the bar. Yes, they'll give you some feedback. But don't expect them to be sat next to you all the time. They have a job to do, and that job is to go and watch the scoreboard. It's to go and keep an eye on what everybody else is doing. So they will leave you. Expect to be on your own for a good chunk of the warm-up room while they do their job. If there's two coaches, it makes it a bit easier. Somebody may be able to be with you for a bit longer. But expect, if it's just one coach, expect them to be leaving you. Uh, okay, so... Once you have finished your snatching in the competition, it's done. Leave it, park it, put it out of your mind. It is finished. If you lift amazingly well, great. But get off that high quick as you can, refocus, ready to go for the clean and jerk. If you lift like a sack of shit, <laughs> then put it behind you. It's done. You can't change it. Put it behind you, refocus. Focus on what is about to come and the things that you can control. It's very easy to get a mindset where you're in the past of what's just happened and you almost forget that you've still got half of the competition left. If you lifted really well, yes, I want you to celebrate it. Yes, I want you to enjoy that experience, but do it at the end of the competition. So right now it's about refocusing, putting the snatch behind you and focusing on what's about to come. That is how I'd recommend dealing with it between snatch and clean and jerk. All right. What if you have got ages if there is ages between a snatch and clean and jerk, let's say you're the first lifter out on the snatch and there is a 10 minute break between snatch and clean and jerk, but you're one of the later lifters out in the clean and jerk, you're gonna have a long wait. And sometimes, depending on how many people are in the category, it could be half an hour, it could be 40 minutes. Depending on the conditions and how you as a lifter or how your lifter deals with the pressure and the nerves, I would say get out of the warm-up room. Just go, go somewhere, go and, go and have a coffee. Don't go too far. And, and keep an eye on the time or go and watch the competition but just get out of that environment and do your own thing uh, chill out for a bit so that you can then uh, refocus and come back in and ready to go okay when you're if you've had a break between snatch and clean and jerk it's important now that you warm up well go back to the bar empty bar uh, and run through a warm-up as you normally would make sure you've planned your warm-up lifts as we did with the snatch and make sure you've counted the scoreboard and you've double counted and double checked so that you know how to time your warm up. Okay. Once you have done a lift on the platform, be mindful that there will be an automatic one kilo increase. So let's say you've done 35 as your opener, you put the bar down, it's a good lift. The bar will automatically go up to, by one kilo to 36. It's down to you or your coach to nominate your second attempt. Very few people would take one kilo. It's normally two, three, four, five kilos. 
that they would go for. So you have to physically go and nominate that weight and sign the piece of paper. Make sure you do that because once your name is called, the clock is ticking and you only have 30 seconds to change that weight.